care to hear me play my lute? If you fancy a bit of music, let me know. I've always fancied a journey up the 7,000 steps to the monastery. We'll show those faithless a dogs journey, who this Lord. land belongs to. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. Welcome to your viewers to Couch Warrior TV on YouTube. I am the Couch Warrior, and you are watching Aranus Arcana, a Skyrim Let's Play. Now, drink for the thirsty, food for the hungry. Drink and food. This is Chapter 9, Part 3. If you remember, at the end of Chapter 9, Part 2, we encountered the cultists in the streets of Iverstad. Stop by for a drink. We have just come through a battle with those cultists, and we are now settling in for the evening here in Iverstad. Before setting out in the morning, this is an opportunity for us to get to know Valfar a little I bit more, make my deliveries more often, and prepare the for the journey ahead. Dangerous. Ah, good to see you again. I delivered the supplies what to High Hrothgar. Anyway, much appreciated. Here, take this for your troubles. You're welcome. Just like you're always there. Wow, that's pretty good. Now let me get back pretty good payday right there. Thanks again for the legwork. I, won't go over there ever I want to thank you all for coming back. This episode is going to clock in at around 50 minutes, so it's a rather heavy one, but there's a little bit of something for everybody in this one. So I'm really looking forward to it. Wage a war against our lesser selves. Cleave to your higher voice, and with it, shatter your foes. Valfar's Journal. This dragonborn is impressive. A man's ability to fight is not his only measure. There is darkness about him, but from where it comes I cannot tell. The contradictions in him are difficult. He is a killer, of that there is no doubt. Yet he is not heartless. All night we spent talking... It was the first time that anyone cared to hear the details of my life. All these years on the mountain must be leading me to this. The Dragonborn returns to save Skyrim, and I to save him. He is a man worthy of the title, and I will have his back. I will crush those who would try to block his path to glory and the resurrection of a long-dead Skyrim. Well, we are back. Ah, such a fine day. Smell the air. Isn't it wonderful? It is. It is wonderful. It's actually a gorgeous day. I hope life's treating you well. So next on the agenda, Fleet and Valfar are going to travel together. We are heading uh, west. We're heading west. Our destination is Whiterun. And I have determined that in the interest of time, I am not going to um, I am not going to present you with uh, all the details of this travel. There will be some, but not all. I'm already uh, pushing an hour on this one. So we'll abbreviate this a little bit. Uh, we'll, we'll get you in on the beginning of the journey and the end of the journey. And I will crop out a little bit in the middle to say uh, cut the time back. We so started. we can get, get the uh, total length of this episode down a little bit. So we are headed to Whiterun first. Oop, troll. No more trolls. At this point, I'm just leading the horse. One thing interesting to note here is that, um, obviously, I've got a lot of mods running here, some of which are pretty complex. There is a lot 
going on with advanced uh, with this uh, follower tweaks, amazing follower tweaks. And at this point in my recording, I was struggling a little bit with trying to figure out how to get Valfar on a horse. And uh, <laughs> it took me a while to figure it out, but I didn't want to actually stop recording. I needed to kind of keep the momentum going. So I went ahead and recorded this with us traveling on foot and me leading the horse. It just doesn't seem right uh, to ride a horse and have your followers on foot. It doesn't make sense. So at this point, I'm just leading the horse, and in the interest of fairness, we're both walking. With my brothers, waging war against the Empire. But what I did find out later is how to actually take a character and import them into Amazing Follower Tweaks. And once I had accomplished that task, that allowed me to also put in force convenient horses. So as soon as I got on my horse, he called his own, and uh, it was nice to have that resolved. So we are approaching Valtheim Towers. This is kind of the, the cut that I was telling you about. I just cut out some of that travel on the mountain trail. There wasn't much that happened there, and I was able to shave off about uh, 8 or 10 minutes. So let's go ahead and take this tower. Those of you who have been watching uh, my Assassin's Survival Guide series, the Death Mentor series, you will have seen this footage already. If you haven't seen that, go check out Death Mentor episode 10, and you will get a different commentary on the same footage that uh, provides some insights into um, my thought process and the techniques I use in getting, getting some of the shots that are seen here. At this point, I have left Valfar behind with the horses on the trail, and Fleet is proceeding forward. He is very familiar, obviously, with the bandits who tend to hang out here. And having seen a bandit out on the road, he knows that a new set of bandits have set up shop here. So he is going to go on ahead by himself and just deal with the problem. If I get Valfar involved, it's just going to get messy, so... Okay, we can see the guy approaching... So I, I can anticipate him coming up, and I just need to time the shot as he's walking up. There it is. And we can see him fall off the side. And his buddies are none the wiser. We also have a sentry over here. He's just at the edge of my range with eagle eye, but if I compensate for range, we can take him out too. Still, our foes have not been alerted to our presence. That is three bandits down, three bandits to go. We have one on lookout up here. So far we've taken out all the bandits in such a way that we haven't raised an alarm. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, a little too high. Quick follow-up. All right, it's number four down. You can see the bandits in the opposite tower, though, are a bit concerned at this point. I don't know if they saw him fall off the side. It's the only thing I could think of they, they might have seen. The bandit who is on watch here on this platform is actually very, very close to, to eye level with where the bandit chief would stand on that opposite tower. So they're on alert. They're running around inside their tower, but the door is closed. They obviously haven't come out yet, so we're going to find a spot here and hunker down. I picked this spot in particular because the bandit chief likes to hang out just at the top of the stairs, and there are a couple of posts there that if I tried to shoot from the opposite platform, I think would be blocking, blocking my shot. I think it would make that, that shot much more difficult than it needs to be. So, we are just going to wait patiently here. Now, if you've watched the Death Mentor episode 10 video, I explained a, a little bit more detail why I'm doing what I'm doing here, but ultimately my objective is to take out all these guys, do it with a bow, not put myself in any jeopardy whatsoever, 
and just eliminate them so we can move on. Now again, one thing I have to keep checking here is because of the way the game is rendering for me, these guys are absolutely at the edge of my range. So unless I'm an eagle eye, sometimes it's difficult to actually see them. They don't actually render in the environment for me until I go into eagle, eagle eye. Okay, here's the chief. He's back up there. We're going to compensate for range and take him out right on his platform. There he goes. You can see the body fall. Now we've got one bandit left inside that tower. Our goal is to eliminate him as well. Uh, he is in the belly of the tower, however, so we have to draw him out. My objective would be to draw him down, so I'm firing some shots through the window here. I'm going to try to bring him down to this level. Once I got him down at this level, uh, we're going to try to draw him down to the walkway and see if we can get him to come out the door. So we draw him down to the first level, then we put one in the door, try to bring him down the steps, try to get him out onto the walkway. Okay, there's a door open. See, now he could be standing there, but unless I'm using eagle eye, I can't see him. So let's put one up in the window here, go to eagle eye. Wait, wait, wait. There he is. That is bandit number six, and the road is once again clear. Fleet should be collecting some money or something from the Jarl for constantly keeping this roadway clear. I think this is the third or fourth time in this series that we've actually uh, cleared out Valheim Towers, which is fine. It is one of my favorite places to attack, this and Robber's Gorge. Always great practice locations, so I'm not complaining, but still, we should get some kind of commission. Six bandits dead every time we come through here? It's only fair, really. All right, so we have collected Valfar, we have looted Valtham Towers, and we are on our way right now to Whiterun. And this brings up a great opportunity to talk about magic. Let's talk about magic, brothers and sisters, because this is something that we have alluded to in the past but never really talked about in detail, specifically illusion. It is the favorite school of many an assassin, including myself. And a lot of people have been asking me what I plan on doing with illusion. I've obviously invested many points in illusion perks, but I haven't done a ton with it yet. And quite honestly, I've been waiting until I was a little bit higher level. I wanted to have enough perks under my belt to really feel like I could be effective as an illusionist. And we have reached that point. Now, the other thing that is important here is because we are running on PC and we have mods available to us, I was looking for just the right mod, just the right spell mod that would give me what I was looking for in terms of illusion magic. I have never been overly excited about the stock illusion spells in Skyrim. So after much review... I have elected to go with the Apocalypse Spell Package for Skyrim, which includes some really amazing illusion spells. We will be touching on them uh, in the future here as we use them, but my focus is really not going to be on all illusion spells from that package, but very specific illusion spells. Fleet's philosophy on illusion and on magic is that... He thinks of it in the same way that you might think of different schools of Kung Fu. <laughs> so the flavor of magic that he uses is what I would, I would call technically displacement magic, where we are making others believe that we are places where we are not. We are, we are using our environment to, and the magic in order to travel from one location to another. And this will become more apparent, and, and we'll see it in practice as, as we go forward. And Fleet's name for this school of magic that he is kind of crafting for himself, he is simply calling Figment. And the objective is to really take a page from the Sumerian doctrines, and we are going to use magic 
to keep our opponents off balance. And our trip here to Whiterun, we are going to visit Ferengar. We're going to pick up a couple of spells that will fit nicely into our Figment School of Magic, uh, our Displacement Style of Magic. And then we will slowly be assembling our arsenal of spells that are targeted at this style of magic that we are creating. Look at that, no guards at the gate. This is unnerving. No guards at the gate. This is never a good sign. Why would that be? Fleet has had problems here in Whiterun in the past where he's been apprehended by the guards and uh, treated to a stay in the dungeon. So coming to the front gates and not seeing any guards, uh, that would be a bit alarming for him. Okay, i got to change my display here. I think we're going to need our HUD and our crosshairs. I had turned them off for a short period of time between uh, sections of this video that I had edited. I was attempting to get some screenshots without the HUD, which I did, but didn't turn it back on. Incidentally, there may be some screenshots appearing on the Facebook page in the next few days from that little photo shoot. No citizens. Oh, here's somebody. Okay, phew, we got some citizens. That was freaking me out a little bit. So we are going to go up to the square, and I am going to um, have Valfar go about his business while we conduct our business up at Dragon's Reach. So we'll drop off Valfar right here in front of the Bannered Mare. That way, if he wants to go get a drink or get some shut-eye or do some shopping, uh, he doesn't have to be bored out of his mind. My guess is, after all this time on the mountain, it might be interesting for him to actually uh, come to a marketplace like this and... I don't know, spend a little money, buy some fresh food. It is quiet here today. Where are all the guards? Okay. Mm. So we will leave him here. We're going to go to Tweak Options. And under Tweak Options, we are going to uh, dismiss him but have him hang out here. So he'll be here when we need him. You tried mercenary and work? off we go. Might suit you. My Jarl Balgraf. This is my last report. Do with it what you will. I arrived back in Whiterun yesterday from our travels east. You can imagine my surprise when I found Thalmor regulars bunked in the guards' quarters. Are we in the business of dealing directly with a Thalmor now? Is this what we have become? Tread carefully, lest you become their next puppet Jarl. You know that I have always respected and served you without question, but in this you have lost my support. The man I serve is in the world taking actions that, while mysterious, are without question in the best interest of Skyrim and her people. Do not expect further communications, as you shall have none. Do not expect my allegiance, as you have lost it. My life and loyalty are now in the hands of the Dragonborn. I am not sure what your intent is, but if this new alignment to Thalmor political machinations becomes a threat to my thane, there will be considerable bloodshed, and it will be on your hands. Lydia. All right, so we need to find Ferengar. We disenchanted a few items that we picked up on the trail. Now we need to just kind of go through his spell books and see what he has. Like the rest of the great warrior... Now, the illusion tomes that I'm after are kind of spread across Skyrim amongst several different vendors. Ferengar is one of them, um, but he's not going to have everything we need. So I'll purchase maybe a couple of things from him, and then we'll have to pick up some of the other ones in our travels. 
So what we're seeing here are are probably a lot of spells that are part of the Apocalypse package, as well as the default spells in Vanilla Skyrim. What I'm mainly interested in are the Illusion Tomes, but I'll pick up a few other things that have utility. I find that a lot of the spells in the Alteration area have a lot of utility. Um, spells that produce light, Mage Light and Candlelight, stuff like that. Um, there's some, some Transmute and Telekinesis kinds of things that are nice to have once in a while, but they're mainly utility spells. They're tools for very specific situations, and they're nice fallbacks to have. So as I said, we're focusing on a school of magic that we're calling Figment. Um, I, I think of it as displacement-type magic that meshes well with Fleet's style uh, when it comes to battlefield tactics. So one that I picked up here is called Blur. Blur is a nice one because that actually provides me some protection, uh, protection through the Illusion School as opposed to... Um, something that reinforces our armor what blur does is blur is through the illusion school and that will make me actually harder to hit so as enemies look at fleet what they will be seeing is um, an unclear vision of who to target or where the actual target is and it lasts for a considerable amount of time uh, it doesn't give me any armor bonuses but just makes him a bit more difficult to hit and that I think is is very much in keeping with our new uh, figment style of illusion magic. So really the spells that I will be focusing on are illusion based spells but sort of combat oriented spells and spells that fit with our our style of play, Fleet's style of play and kind of mesh with some of the doctrines that we've talked about, uh, Sumerian's doctrines in past episodes, keeping the enemy off balance, not allowing them to know where you are or where you're attacking from, not allowing them to understand your motivations, you know, things of that nature. So let's sell off a few things to Ferengar. We've got junk weighing us down that's worth money. We will get rid of some of this stuff, lighten our load, increase our coin purse. Look at that. We're, we're up over 13,000 septums now. That should be more than enough to finance uh, the purchase of future spells. But what this is going to mean is that we're going to have to you know, if you've got just be aware as we travel around Skyrim who the vendors might be uh, who would have uh, spells that, that would be you know things that we would want so that we're not going way out of our way or missing opportunities to get the spells we need. So we've got Blur here. Um, fear, Featherfall, Healing and Oak Flesh, those are ones that we've already had. In fact, I'm going to go sell back some of these tomes that I already it seems this damnable have, hmm. have I memorized. For a mage. I think you'll Since appreciate we're here, this. no point in carrying around spell books we don't need. So let's do that. Here we go. Remember, your mind is the best. It would appear that I purchased more than one copy of Blur, so I just sold that one back to him. Not the most efficient use of our funds, but hey, what are you going to do? And it is very near dusk. We are going to head back down to the marketplace. where we will meet up again with Valfar and uh, acquire a place to stay for the night. I'm so hungry. Sure, kid. Have a coin. Oh, thank you. Divines. Go get your some food. Heart. I don't mind giving the kids money. I'm pretty sure they're not going to spend it on mead. That's a good thing, right? Here we are back in the square.
I ain't done nothing. I know that man in the square. Black armor, eye patch, white hair, and a dark mood. There's no doubt. It has to be the Dragonborn. This is my lucky day. A little extra coin in my pocket and mead in my belly. Word on the street is that the Thalmor will pay shiny septums to anyone who can point out the Dragonborn to their agents. Looks like old Brennuin is the only one in this city with half a brain. journal. I found a letter from Lydia tucked inside the spell books I purchased from Ferengar today. She requested that I meet her in the square after dark and indicated that it was of the utmost importance. When we finally met, she seemed very concerned about my safety. It seems that Nefei spotted a group of Thalmor soldiers passing through Riverwood and had followed them to the gates of Whiterun, where they passed through without argument from the guard. Nefei reported that she overheard the name Dragonborn more than once as she followed them, and was worried that they were hunting me. Nefei has done good work. I believe that leaving the city would be a certain trigger for an attack and what they would expect. While I'm not sure they know who I am yet, I have to assume they do. If there's going to be a fight, I must make it on my terms. I have asked Lydia to return at dawn with Nefei and join me on the steps of the Bannered Mare. We shall all leave together and fight together. Never reaches of my you know where. Welcome back, brothers and sisters. We are back in the Bannered Mare. We have just met with Lydia, yeah. up, and now we are joining Valfar for dinner. Mm. Looks like he's already about ten meads in. However, given the we'll revelations that, we? from Lydia, we will not be joining him in the revelry. Enough talk. There's much to do. You want a drink? Need something? Hmm. Hi there. Hi there. Depends. 
Are you What's on the menu? Hungry. Alto wine, please. Oh, you have lots of Alto wine. We don't need 12 bottles. And we'll take two. An extra for good measure. Mm -hmm. Very good. I wanted to take an opportunity to thank friends All right. of the show, friends of Couch Warrior TV. Watch yourself out there. Firstly, I'd like to uh, give a shout out to Jessa from the Jessa channel. She has uh, been taking some time off from producing her Let's Plays, but she is going to be back shortly with some new hardware to boot. I enjoy this work so really that uh, she'll be gracing, with, gracing us with some brand new anyway, Let's you... Plays in the very near future here. So what can I get uh, you? great to have her back making videos sure again. It's yours for That's pretty exciting. As well as Serial Assassin 4, right this way. great loyal friend of the show. He always checks in with me every so often on Steam. Um, wonderful guy. Mm -hmm. He's doing great playthroughs. He's kind of doing some warrior-focused stuff, and uh, he is not a one-trick pony like me. He does several games at once, so he is uh, working hard. I encourage you to Let check out his channel, again. Serial Assassin 4. Also, another great friend of the show, Mr. Gosgoyle, who uh, uh, watches my videos, which I surely appreciate very much. So check out his YouTube channel as well. I also wanted to give a shout-out to Seth for life. Those of you who are diehard Skyrim assassins like me know that Seth, a long time back, set the standard for what it means to be an assassin in Skyrim, what's possible, and that it's possible to play a character and do it in a classy way. Uh, he is the guy who really made the videos that inspired me to play an assassin early on in my Skyrim career. And now as I am uh, really bringing everything I can to these videos. Seth has reappeared and is making new videos, which is wonderful to see. And I wanted to thank him for taking the time to stop in and comment on one of my videos in the Death Mentor series. Really appreciate it and looking forward to seeing more from him. So where are we now? We are in the Bannered Mare. We've gotten a full night's sleep. It is the next morning. And Not we are so expecting sure some trouble from the Thalmor. So we are pulling together our entire team. This will include Fleet, Valfar, Nefei, and Lydia. We have asked Lydia and Nefei to meet Charles us on the steps of the Bannered Mare. And we are going to try to leave the city of Whiterun without getting into an altercation. But if we do... Mm. We will bring everything we have to bear in terms of, of armor, weapons, you know that. tricks, and tactics. So off we go. And there they are. Here comes Nefei and Lydia. And it looks like we've got one, two, three, we've got five Thalmor soldiers in the middle of the square early this morning. I'm guessing their intent is not going to be to allow us to leave. So we are going to fight. Take a man and put it down. I'm pulling back here. I'm going to use the bow to the best effect I can to support my teammates. So we will be uh, doing some, some additional damage to these guys. Try to make the job easier. Look at Valfar is taking on three at once. Look at that, one left. All these guys are efficient. Awesome. I don't even have to fire. <laughs> yeah, we did show them. Thank you, Nefei. Excellent intelligence gathering. At this point, I think we owe Nefei 
a reward for that. Now that two-handed increase actually comes from my followers, so as my followers gain levels, I will see that as well. That is not from me. I obviously wasn't using a two-handed weapon and probably never will. I'd have to be pretty desperate. We'll know it. So at this point, Fleet is considering what to do next. Obviously, we've... The notoriety is going to be an issue now. Um, the ability to hide is, is dramatically is dramatically decreased. So going forward, Fleet is going to have to... I ain't done this guy. <laughs> you ain't done nothing. Sure, whatever. So at this point, I think Fleet is going to have to be... He's going to have to be trickier, you know? He's going to have to up his game a little bit. If he wants to do anything in a clandestine fashion, he's going to have to go out of his way to make sure that he goes from point A to point B without being discovered or in disguise. Or, you know, he's going to have to be more careful about his strategies. But that should add some interest to our story. And for her role in this, what happened? Fleet will view Nefei's intelligence as have, having potentially saved his life in this situation, so he is going to reward her with offering her back her status as an assassin, giving her back her armor and her weapons. Here she comes. And the team is reassembled. Oh, what happened? Now we're up to four. I'm assuming that was sarcasm, Nefei. You know what happened there. All right, so we're going to gather up our followers. And now we make for Falkreath in the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary. We should be there by nightfall. We should be able to continue our Dark Brotherhood quest line, but we will do it with our full party of four, Valfar, Lydia, Nefei, and Fleet, together as a group. We got everybody on a horse. It's incredible how this stuff all works once you get it set up. And we are off. So now Fleet is fully aware that the Thalmor know, know who he is. They have some sort of bone to pick with him. They're interested in eliminating him, apparently. Uh, what the full extent of their concern is about him uh, as a threat he doesn't know yet, and that is something that he's going to need to investigate. So, in the future here, he will bringing he will be bringing uh, as many resources together as he can to try to figure that out and determine what he needs to do to protect himself where the Thalmar are concerned. At this stage, I think it's safe to say that the arrival of the Dragonborn is something that could potentially whip the native populace of Skyrim, the Nords, into a frenzy. Uh, it could bolster their confidence and potentially make the Civil War a much more difficult war to win for the Thalmor and the Imperials if the arrival of the Dragonborn is something that uh, tends to bolster the morale of the Stormcloaks and the native populace. So, to me, that seems like a reasonable explanation for why the Thalmor might want him dead, but there could be other reasons as well. Reasons that will likely be revealed in future episodes. 
So for now, it's just about getting from point A to point B. It's been a long time coming, but we did go down to Riften with the intent of getting this amulet appraised, which we have done. We have gotten our letter of credit from Delvin, so we know that the plot to assassinate the Emperor is legitimate, it's serious, and it's paid for. Even better. Come on, wolf. Circle him tight, circle. There he goes. Convenient horses kicks in, allows us to get all of the loot. Let's see if our team is coming here. Now oh, here they come. Is that an empty horse? Oh no, it's got a ride around it. Alright, everybody's accounted for. Another wolf. And another pelt. Which is good. I need to acquire more pelts, as I am going to be making some new cold weather gear. I may have mentioned this in a previous episode, but I'd like to reiterate this. Thank you. Uh, one of the viewers clued me in. The mod that I was looking for is called Winter is Coming. So I've got that one, and uh, I'm, I'm much happier with the apparel that's available in that. So we'll be crafting a new cold weather cloak as soon as I've acquired enough pelts to do so. So thank you again, brothers and sisters, for your viewership. I am very glad that in this episode we finally had the opportunity to talk a little bit about illusion magic. I'm very excited about the direction we're going with this. It'll be just one more item in the arsenal that we have at our disposal. So, you know, the bow has always been a standby, and of course the dagger, but now we've also added swordplay, and we will be adding illusion magic, which really ought to spice things up significantly, um, especially with all the perks that we've invested in, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And the interesting spells that we're going to be able to use from the Apocalypse spell package. It takes them a little while to catch up with me. I don't know what they do. I have used the Convenient Horses mod to tweak the settings on my horse a little bit, so I've increased the speed and stamina of this horse uh, so that we can, you know, kind of get to where we need to go a little bit more rapidly. So that is why I'm able to sustain uh, a full gallop with this horse a little bit longer than a vanilla Skyrim horse. I've made some adjustments to his stamina and speed. That just, you know, is a function of trying to keep the, the travel time reasonable. So... One other question that has come up a couple of times that I feel I owe a little bit of explanation about is why I don't use some of the lighting enhancement mods. I've done playtesting of these mods and found that they affect not only the performance of my playthrough in terms of the uh, frames per second that I get when I'm recording, but they also can make the night scenes so dark that it's difficult to tell a story. I mean, absolutely dark. Um, which is great if I'm prepared to travel around all the time using mage light or, you know, something like that. But it just, it's too much of a hassle. So I, I'm sticking with kind of the vanilla Skyrim lighting options here because they actually, uh, it's light enough that we're able to kind of see what's going on even in the dead of night. Three more wolves. Three more pelts. Oh, look at that. Valfar just took one out. All right, so we'll continue. So at this point, we've assembled quite an interesting crew of individuals. Valfar adds some color to this. <clears throat> and as is apparent from the journal entry that he wrote at the beginning of this episode, his motivation for following Fleet is that he sees some higher purpose um, in following fleet. He sees himself as sort of a bodyguard, and now it is obvious there have been two occasions now in the last uh, two episodes 
where Fleet has been under threat simply because of his status as Dragonborn, one from the Thalmor and one from Mirak and his followers. And Valfar has taken it upon himself to be the man who watches Fleet's back. That is great in that uh, it's going to mean that Fleet has someone looking out for him, someone who's sort of acting as a bodyguard as he goes about his business and does the things that he needs to get done for himself, for the Dark Brotherhood, for Skyrim. Um, however, it could be also a pain going forward um, for those occasions when Fleet Neil needs to take action on his own. Uh, there could be some friction associated with trying to leave the party or do things independently. So we'll have to just see how that plays out. But I'm very happy with the group we've assembled so far. It's kind of a really diverse and interesting group. So going done. forward as we as we mm. travel, uh, we'll be using amazing follower tweaks to assign them party roles. Um, party roles that, that make sense. So when we're on the open road, everybody's got a, a specific set of capabilities uh, that all work together well as a team. I'll probably get into that a little bit in future episodes, but for now we're allowing everybody to use mm -hmm. kind of their standard mm -hmm. set of capabilities. At this point, I am asking everybody to stay here, and I will be bringing Nefe only. So Valfar and Lydia will be staying here. Those two are an interesting pairing, with the big weapons and heavy armor. Right behind you. Should be interesting. Still here. Okay, you wait here, Lydia. As you wish, my fame. Mm. By the nine, I hate the waiting. The goddamn waiting. Yeah, he's surly. All right, Nefei, let's go. Obviously, Nefei has put herself back in Fleet's good graces. He has awarded her her armor back, her status as his apprentice, and her weaponry. And now he will be taking her into the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary officially as his apprentice for the first time and exposing her to the world of the Dark Brotherhood. And that brings us to the end of another episode. I want to thank you for taking the journey with me. And until next time, may all that you do be swift, quiet, and deadly. And to all Skyrim assassins, I salute you. Silence is our battle cry. You've been watching Aranus Arcana, a Skyrim Let's Play. If you liked this video, please rate, like, and subscribe. For more information on this and other Couch Warrior broadcasts, visit me on the web at www.couchwarrior.tv.